Hi and welcome to Mahika Tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to see method overloading. Now, before starting with method overloading, let us understand what type of polymorphism we achieve through method overloading. Now, we know that polymorphism is one of that OOPS concept that allows to take more than one form that is it is an ability to take multiple forms or when we use the same thing for different purposes that is known as polymorphism now polymorphism can be either compile time polymorphism or it can be runtime polymorphism compile time polymorphism take place when the method call and method to be called are binded at the time of compilation itself whereas in case of runtime polymorphism the method call and method to be called are binded at the time of execution. We are going to see method overloading which is one of the example of compile time polymorphism whereas later on we will see method overriding which is an example of runtime polymorphism. So for now we will discuss method overloading only and in subsequent tutorials we will see method overriding. Method overloading means when we have multiple methods by same name but with different parameters in class. Now this is done to achieve the readab to increase the readability of a program. That is we can give multiple methods within the class with the same name but their parameter list should be different and this parameter list may vary in one of these two ways. We can achieve method overloading by either changing the number of arguments or by changing the data type of arguments. Okay, But we can change the type of arguments or the number of arguments to achieve method overloading. We cannot achieve method overloading by changing the return type or the access specifier of a method. We will become clear with all these points once we start with the practical. So we will start with an example where we will try to achieve method overloading by changing the total number of arguments for same method. So let's move to Eclipse. So we will write a code in Eclipse. Now here we will write an example for method overloading by changing the total number of parameters of the method. So we will create a new class. Let's say test and we will add a main method to it. Now here we are going to write area methods with different parameters. We will give area which will take only one parameter. This method we will use to compute the area of circle. So here we can give float AR for area equals 3.1416F which is for the value of pi and then R multiplied by r okay and here we can add message r okay let's say area of circle and here we will display the value in the variable area okay now we are going to overload area method that is we are going to give one more definition for area but here parameters will be different we will give two parameters let's say l and b now here we will display the area of rectangle so we can directly give it over here like area of rectangle 
and we can display it by multiplying L and B. Okay. Similarly, if we want, we can take one more area method in which we will give three parameters and that will compute area of triangle. So here we will have three parameters. And let's say height. So now here we will display area of triangle. Okay, we can compute it here only. Fine. Now we need to invoke these methods in the main method. So here we need to call the methods with the instance. So we will first create the instance of our class. And now with this instance, we will call the area methods with different values. Okay. Let's say if I am giving 2.3f and 3.5f and then we are again calling obj dot area but this time suppose if I am passing three values okay similarly we will give one more call And suppose this time we are passing only one value. Okay. So now we know execution is going to begin from the main method. And in main method what we have done we are calling this area method. When first time we are calling this area method we are passing two floating point values. So at the time of compilation itself compiler will bind this method call with this area method which has two floating point parameters. And then we have obj.area again but with three parameters. So this method call will be binded to this area method. And then finally we are giving obj.area obj.area so here we have only one parameter so this method call will be binded to this area method which is taking only one floating point parameter so we are giving me methods with the same name this is polymorphism and what we have done we have kept the number of arguments different so that compiler can identify when we say obj.area then which area method is to be executed. So now when we will execute this code we should get first area of rectangle then area of triangle and then we should get the area of circle. So let's execute this code. We are getting area of rectangle, then area of triangle and then area of circle. Because we have first invoked the area method with two float parameters, then area with three float parameters and then area with one float parameters. So this is how we can achieve method overloading. That is we can give more than one method with the same name by making their parameter list different. Now in next tutorial we will see the second way of achieving method overload overloading in which number of arguments will be same but the data type will be different. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe the channel if you haven't done it yet.